Go. Christy, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and welcome to the Hampton Board of Selectmen's meeting for November 5th. First thing is public comment. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak? Mr. Preston, how are you tonight? <laughs> Mr. Bryan, and yourself? Excellent. I just wanted to touch briefly on um, the town manager's report on parking on the Ashworth Avenue lot down on the beach. And um, I don't think we should be charging at all down there. I, you know, I think there's other lots in town that we plow that, that, that there's no charge on, so. They also like to um, bring up, it, I don't know when you're meeting the state meeting there, um, you know, if that's going to happen again or not, but you might want to bring up the parking kiosks because I'd like to see if possible this year the Ashworth Avalot split with the police have an easement that goes from the bottom of F Street straight in they have a gate. If you put a fence up there and you took that lot just to the north, you get 120 spaces. Your entrance would be off of Brown Ave. And if you put a couple of kiosks in there, I think you'd realize more revenue. And I also think it'd be more user friendly to, you know, residents, guests, businesses, you know, all the way around. And the state might be able to help you out if that meeting, when and if that meeting happens. I don't know what the agenda is or anything, or who controls the agenda. But you might be able to get some information from them about the Calais parking systems and the pros and cons of it. <coughs> and it's, it's something to really consider. I don't know if that would take a Warren article or if the, if the money could be found in the budget somewhere. But, you know, something to seriously consider. But as far as parking down there, you know, we want cars off the road. But, you know, we plow it. You've got to give people a place to go. There's other lots in town, and I don't think anybody gets charged in other lots in town. I think that should be the same at the cash for death. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else from the public would like to speak? Seeing none, announcements of community calendar. Mary Louise. I don't have anything this evening. Regina. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to say when I was in the town hall today, I was informed that uh, Jason Vishanda, our town planner's father, had passed away. So I just wanted to uh, note that uh, we offer the best wishes to him while he has to deal with that. And also, I want to remind everyone to please vote tomorrow at the high school. We're open from 7 o'clock in the morning <coughs> until 8 o'clock at night. Hope to see everyone there. Thank you. Very good. Jim. Jim. Same thing. Vote. No matter who you're voting for, vote. It's your right. It's your responsibility. So make sure you get there and, and be part of the uh, solution, please. Rick. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing everyone at the polls. The only thing I have is the Hobbs House has a soup and chowder challenge on Saturday evening, uh, it's a it's a great event and a uh, great community event, and uh, the monies go to support Hobbs House and, and all the good work that goes on there. So, all right, we have the approval of the minutes for October twenty second. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Move second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. All those in favor? Four. One abstain. Consent agenda. We have uh, 2019 veterans credits. We have two, 2019 uh, new. Uh, new veterans credits. Yeah. And we also have a uh, raffle permit for the professional firefighters of Hampton for raffles uh, for the chili cook-off uh, at Wally's uh, for the benefits go to the Hampton Firefighters Toy Bank. I'll so move the three items on the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. I'll all, second. All those in favor? Unanimous. And the chili cook-off is the 15th? I believe the chili cook-off is the 15th. Okay. November 15th. November 15th, coming right up. It's, uh, chili again. again, that's another great event and uh, goes to support the kids in the community. So Good. It's a, a great Vote event. for Rusty's chili. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if I'm making one or not. Oh, no. <laughs> I, may, I may make one, I may not. It all depends. i got a lot going on this week. Well, next week. <clears throat> the next one we have appointments. Uh, we have Tyler Payne from Plodzik and Sanderson for the audit report. Good evening. My name is Tyler Payne. Scott Egan could not be here with us tonight, so I will take over the duties of just highlighting the 2017 audit report. Just a couple things I wanted to touch on 
I'm not going to go into an incredible level of detail, but then I'm going to open it up to questions after I conclude my little presentation here. Thank so you. Just, Are we going to get books? You already got books. You already got yeah. the books. Where? Two weeks ago. Yeah, the books were put into your guys' mailbox uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the audit report was posted on the website at that same time. Right. I think it's been about. What month? probably yeah, over a month, 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 month or so? Issue, yeah. Okay. yeah, early October. Yep, yeah. and they um, they are, it is on the website also. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So I just wanted to start on page one of the audit report. It's the opinion. It's the big portion of this report here, the most important. It highlights management's responsibilities, our responsibilities, and opinions on your opinion units of the financial statements. And as you can see, the town got the best possible opinion, what we call the unmodified or clean opinion. And I'll read the paragraph. In our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects the respective financial position of the governmental activities, each major fund, and the accurate remaining fund information of the town of Hampton as of December 31st, 2017, and the respective changes in financial position and the respective budgetary comparison for the general fund for the year ended in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. And the acronym you'll often hear for that is GAP. And the generally accepted accounting principles in the United States of America is GASB, which stands yep. for Government Accounting Standards Board. The next page of the report I'd like you to turn to, page 43 in the <coughs> budgetary statements here. This shows the estimated revenues versus the actual, any shortfalls or any overages. And overall, the town recognized over $358,000 in revenue more than what was anticipated or expected. A large chunk of that looks like it was due to property taxes and unanticipated other local revenue. So if we can move on to page 44, same idea, but this is going to be the expenditures. So it also accounts for your current year encumbrances and your prior year, stuff you're rolling forward to expend and what you're rolling forward for next year to expend as well. Okay. So and if you look at the bottom of page 45, you see that you had underspent your appropriations by about $660,000. Mm -hmm. And the best summary in the report here is on page 46. It shows all the changes in your unassigned fund balances presented on the same basis of accounting that's reported to the state of New Hampshire for tax rate setting. Okay. So that's where you see the non-GAAP budgetary basis. That refers to what's called the budgetary basis state of New Hampshire. So it's not in compliance with generally accepted accounting principles, but this is how the state of New Hampshire wants you to report certain information. Okay. Stuff. So as you see, the town voted, or you started with about $7.1 million in unassigned fund balance. You used $600,000 to reduce the tax rate, and you appropriated $200,000. When you look, when you account for the, the unexpended appropriations and the revenue surplus, in the changes in your other fund balance categories, the town ended up with a, a fund balance of about $7.5 million at year end, which is very positive considering that you expected that amount to probably decrease by $800,000 because that's what you voted to reduce the tax rates and that's what you appropriated for that next year. So it, I would say that was a very positive turn. Now if I can get you to go to, let's see, actually this is my last thing here. No page number here, this was just a note for myself. There were no significant accounting pronouncements that occurred for fiscal year 17 for your reporting period. But for fiscal year 18, GASB 75 will be applicable. Kind of a two-headed beast because not only it's going to change your existing other post-employment benefits, essentially they are revaluing and they're reporting a different number that's always been in your, your other post-employment benefit actuarial report. So you're going to see a jump in the liability there. Additionally. As for GASB 68, where we had the, the liability that the town had to report for their share, their proportionate share of the shortfall of the system, yeah. you're going to see that with GASB 75. Because as you know, the, the retirement rate is built on two different things, <coughs> a pension percentage and a medical subsidy percentage. So now the state of New Hampshire has done the same thing that they did for 68 and valued what their potential shortfall is in the plan based on what they expect to pay out. And they apportion that off to all the member communities. So for fiscal year 18, there will be a brand new liability for <coughs> financial statements and similar to GASB 68. It's an actuarial liability, not an accounting liability. So it's not like you can send a check to the state of New Hampshire and say, we're clean, we're good. No, it goes into the big pot and it gets spread amongst all member communities. So that's where I'm going to stop here. 
and open it up to any questions that you may have. Mary Louise? Let's go yes. right around. Speaking of retirement, the state of New Hampshire, if I recall correctly, no longer contributes. There is no to longer retirement. a state share. That went away, I want to say 2011 or 12. I might not be exact on that. Yeah. So they, the state is dumping the responsibility for retirements on all of the communities. Yes. <laughs> well, that's just very nice of them. Hmm. Any other questions to the audit? Comments, questions? I do have a question on yeah. that. Um, actually, on our annual liability, which was actually just to point out our total pension liability, which sorry, I do have this on my just page take, two. On the footnote of that? Yes, yeah, right in page 31 is that pension footnote. Okay. And so. it's not, it won't jump out too clearly. You have to go to the next page for the actual liability. Yeah, so in 2017. Oh, it's right there, I'm sorry. Last paragraph in 31. Yeah, so uh, the town reported liability is almost $26 million. Correct. So that's sitting there yep. right now as a liability. Now you're saying next year we're going to have, per implementation of a new GASB, exactly. there's going to be another piece of that that's exactly. going to add. That, that's just the pension piece. There's going to be the medical subsidy piece as well through the state of New Hampshire. And it's not as significant, but it is still, for a community of your size, I would expect it to be millions of dollars. Okay. Wonderful. So, you know, let's say let's say thirty million. Okay, this year just with the pension liability, we had a recognized pension expense. Yep. So what actually hit us was two point six million. So just to give everyone an idea, now is that the portion that would have been partially funded by the state prior to prior to, yes. The pension the employer expense I, I was it three or three and a half percent. They used to pay part of the employer amount for the various categories of the retirement system. Okay, so just for that, say I rounded to 40%, that sure. would be over a million dollars would have been taken off the taxpayers of Hampton. And if it was only 20%, that would be over $520,000 taken mm -hmm. off the taxpayer mm -hmm. of sure, Hampton. It expense. Still so <laughs> it's very material. So Absolutely. Very material. Would you say that as an Absolutely. auditor? See, I was an auditor, and I like that word material. <laughs> and I only like to look at things when they're material, and this is very material. It's $30 million. Yep. Another material thing we have is our, our borrowings are about, what were they, about 49? We can go back to page 30. You're just talking the long-term bonds and notes. Yeah, everything together. So that would include the pensions and oh, all. Oh, excuse me. So go to page 29. You'll see the... Uh, I guess the entire categorization of your long-term liabilities there at that bottom of that table. Okay, so we got 45 million, and right now for just our bonds and notes, we're, on, <coughs> we're about 17.8 million. Now that does not reflect our wastewater treatment plan that we just approved, and also no anything the marsh been, pipes, which are very recent. Correct. Anything that's been authorized and issued after 17 would not be reflected in. And I'm sorry to bring this all up, but I sure. figured now was an opportune time because I'm dealing with an opinion that was submitted to the paper this week. Sure. And they wanted some explanation as to why we didn't take any money from the unassigned fund balance this year. Because yeah. we have actually, if you look at what you stated, we're about right the same per our finance director's numbers, what she has so far. Yeah. We're about the same right now in our balance fund as we were at the end of last year, which the way I look at it is a very good thing because Absolutely. we offset 800000 last year exactly. to the taxpayers. Exactly. So the reason why I chose not to do that this year was because if you look at what our borrowing is going to be maybe in the next two, three, four years, mm -hmm. it's going to increase our annual expense yeah, by about a million service. dollars. So I'd say, and I agreed, and I think the whole board who was yeah. a unanimous vote agreed that we would wait and hold some of that so that we can actually offset it when we have to. Sure. Because this year the tax rate dropped five cents sure. for the town portion. Yeah. So I just wanted to make that clear yeah. as to why we made the decision we did, and that was through uh, the direction of our town manager, Fred Welch. Absolutely. I would say that was a very prudent so. action by the board. All right. Thank you. That's all I have right now. Sure. Yeah, I want to agree with what uh, Regina just said about withholding, not, not doing the money this year. It's yeah. better to have that money held back yeah. so that we have it when we need it 
and the and the tax rate actually went down five. The municipal tax rate went down a little bit this year, anyways. So it's not always, you know, you you got to you got to plan for the future too. It's very very important. Um, when we talk about depreciation too, when you depreciate assets yeah, over absolutely. the year, can you just explain what 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 the process is and. and Sure. I mean, it that was Gatsby. Gatsby, first and foremost, they recommend that the town has a capital asset policy, which they do. And within that policy, you have one of the most important things is identifying how you're going to capitalize or what you capitalize. So defining, you know, over a certain threshold, we only capitalize equipment over 5,000, infrastructure over 100,000. Once that is done, you have to estimate. So by capitalize, you mean just so people realize what you're talking capitalize, about? Capitalize um, starting to depreciate. So recognize an expense over more than one period rather than just in one period. Because those assets, the theory is they're going to benefit the town for more than just one year. So it's almost misleading to show the expense in one year when it's going to benefit you for maybe 15 to 20. So that's where the depreciation comes in is what we use as a straight line method which allocates it by an even amount based on your estimated useful life of that asset. So $10,000 10 years, $1,000 recognized each year as an expense for depreciation. Okay, good, thank you. No problem. Uh, and I have one other question. Uh, I forgot it. I don't know if I like where this is. <laughs> <laughs> so compared to the other towns that you see, you would say that Hampton is in a very good position? Absolutely, the financial position is very good, especially when we see you know, the, the turnaround in the fund balance when you expected to lose 800, not to lose, but to utilize 800,000, you still had a positive growth of, you know, ballpark 250, $300,000. And what about um, for the next two or three years? You, you say everything to be the way that it should be? That's tough for me to tell right mm -hmm. at this point, but yeah, I, I guess I couldn't answer that for you. Yeah. My apologies. Yeah, the um, thing is, well, I do uh, agree that we have to do plan for the future, but I also feel, particularly because Hampton uh, has an elderly population, I think that we have to plan for now. I don't see putting off a lot of things um, to save a great deal of money four years down the road when some of those people aren't going to be here. So I hear that a lot. People would uh, like to uh, see their money uh, dealt with today while they're still here. Sure. Thank you. No All right, Rick just jarred my brain. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> unassigned uh, fund balance okay. or the undesignated or whatever they call it now. Yeah, unassigned now. Unassigned. All right. Yep. That's not necessarily a cash. No. No, it's, no, it it's is an not. accounting. It's an accounting. It's what we call a fund equity. It's it's more than just cash because you have what we we call accruals. You have taxes that haven't. You recognize as revenue, but you haven't collected those taxes yet. So items like those impact the fund balance. So it's not just easy to or as straightforward as saying that's what we have in the bank currently. Right. Thank you. No I problem. think that gets misunderstood frequently. Absolutely. <clears throat> I think it gets a lot more frequent than we'd like to yeah. <laughs> care. Uh, one thing you had on here was the uh, the Victory Garden account, bank account. Are we looking at the governance letter? Okay. The governance yes. letter. Yes. Yes. So is there something we should be doing with that? Basically, just per New Hampshire state statutes, that account should be held in the custody of the treasurer. So that's just our, our main issue with that. If it's, if it's you know, truly a conservation commission bank account, the custody of that account should be held by the treasurer. OK. You know, in the greater scheme of things, as far as the recommendation, that's a pretty minor one, we would say, on our end. OK. Mm. Absolutely. Yes. One question. Actually, I just have a statement I'd like to make. Sure. Financially, <laughs> you plan for the future, and our tax rate is two dollars less than it was in 2015. So again, I'd like to thank the town manager and our finance director, Christy Pulliam. And as you can see, they do great work. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Seeing none. Thanks All for right. coming out. Thank Thanks for coming out. Thanks for waiting. Time. Next one we'll have is Jay Diener. Oh, yeah. Good. 
Yeah, that's great. Hi, everybody. Good evening. We are here tonight to ask for your approval to complete the acquisition of two parcels in the area that's currently known as the Hampton Town Forest. Mm -hmm. They are map 58, lot 3, which is a 2.2 acre parcel, and map 60, lot 9, which is a 2.3 acre parcel. And I will show them this is 58.3 here, and this is 60.9, this long, thin one, both the ones in purple. Um, Excellent. What we're trying to do is to acquire properties that are within the area known as the town force so that we can better monitor them um, for the purpose of uh, conservation as well as recreation for all of the town um, uh, residents. Um, we have completed the, the deeds for these parcels. Um, they've been agreed to by the uh, current property owners. Uh, we've held our requisite um, public hearing, um, and um, so we're here looking for your approval. Um, I think Barbara can speak to what the, the goals are for these parcels. Uh, yes. What our overall objective long term is to be able to have a trail that goes from Mill Road, over there on the left, mm -hmm. all the way across to... Woodland Road in the Ice Pond area, yep. so that we will have contiguous land to allow for walkers and bicyclists, snowshoers, whatever, to, um, to have a trail to be able to have a good stretch of land that they can use good. for passive recreation. I just want to mention that um, this uh, acquisition is being paid for by the Conservation Commission through the Conservation Fund, which has been established for this purpose. Uh, so there will be no additional request for funds from the townspeople. Good. Anyways. If I may make the motion. Can I have get any questions, if there's any questions first? Well, I'm prepared to make the All motion right. unless anyone else has questions. Okay. I, any other I questions of the board? Yes. Okay, so I hereby I, move to approve the conservation. I, I have a question. Oh, okay. Well, well why don't you can? Because I was helping he was somebody. Helping. That's can why. Can you not talk after the mo so we can so discuss we have, the motion? So he was busy helping. We have. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, sir. Could you just explain what what the fund is where you're getting the money? Sure. The fund is the conservation fund um, that, uh, per the RSAs, has been established for the conservation commission. Um, and this fund is used for the acquisition of parcels um, for conservation purposes and maintenance of those parcels. And how much is in the fund? The fund now is... This was at the end of June. It was $99,318.56. And this is going to cost? This is going to cost a total of $4,500 for the two parcels. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, go ahead with your motion. I hereby move to approve the Conservation Commission's acquisition by purchase of two parcels of land being map 58, lot 3, and map 60, lot 9, to be added to the town forest for a total of $4,500 to be paid for out of the Hampton Conservation Commission fund along with recording costs and title insurance costs. I have a motion. Second. I'll second it. Okay. All right. Now I Let's just, um, are there any other conversation? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, excellent idea. Jay, the first parcel, the very long green parcel, what's in between that and, and, uh, and the eastern parcel? Um, you mean in this area? No, uh, well, no, between that long green line. No, the one that you're showing, the new one, the dark green. Oh, the purple What's one in between? This one? Yeah. Privately owned. It's private land. It's just land? It's just land. No structures? Correct. And is that something that we might be considering looking at? We're for, considering looking at it. It's a question of whether or not the current owner is considering wants selling to it. to sell it. Sure. Yes. Okay. And hopefully, uh, we have been trying to get 20000 a year in the warrant article, 
for the Conservation Commission fund. Will you be putting one in for 2019, do you know? Uh, I believe we will be putting a warrant article in for an additional contribution to the Conservation Fund, yes. Excellent, because it's generally been an annual <coughs> warrant article. It generally has. We try to build up that fund on a gradual basis so it doesn't cause a major hit up yeah. for the taxpayers. And in, this is a ter tremendous benefit to the community to have these quiet parcels with no building that you can use for passive recreation. Any other questions from the board? So we have a motion and a second to allow the purchase of this piece of property. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, ladies Thank and you gentlemen. Very much. Appreciate it was it. tough, wasn't it? Tough. Well, they weren't all tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next person we have is oh, Deborah, Deborah. Yeah. Kucher. Yes. A waiver to work. Request reduction of the monthly fee for the winter lease space at the yeah, Ashworth Avenue right. parking yeah. lot. Just be careful. Take your time. <laughs> yeah, I fell yesterday and broke my cane. Well, well, you have a request here, a waiver request for a reduction of the monthly fee for winter leased parking space at the Ashworth Avenue parking lot. Yeah, I just recently moved last Thursday, actually the 25th, I moved on to F Street. Didn't realize there was no parking because I was doing a winter rental at the Royal Crest Motel and I found that apartment, well actually it was a room, but once I moved in it, I found it's too small for me, so he's giving me the, the bigger one. Mm -hmm. And it's going to cost me an extra $75, so I don't even know if I can even afford to pay for this parking because this is going to totally wipe me out with my SSDI. Now, the, the property owner does not provide parking? He has two cars there, and the, but the house that people have been there for years, he's not taking it away from them, he said. And I said, bye. Mm -hmm. Under the circumstances, Mr. Chairman, I would be happy to move that we waive the fee uh, for uh, Deborah to park in a leased uh, parking space during the winter. And uh, Fred has said that the parking spaces are uh, not, uh, there's no charge for the parking spaces in the summer. Is that? For a lease, there is. For a lease? Right. In, so cases, would, in cases of lease or rental of parking spaces, the law also requires us to assess real estate taxes against the space. But, so that will be in addition to, we, we tax it as if it is leased and there is a full amount of money paid for it. So is there any provision in the uh, eventuality that the landlord does not provide any parking spaces down there? Are there any requirements for them to provide parking? That's what your zoning says. There's spaces. no requirements to provide any parking spaces on any of the lettered streets. Oh, that's nice. So. What if, wow. I think, do you have a handicap plate? I have the handicap sticker, not the plate. The placard. Oh. They gave yeah. me that, yeah. That, yeah, that because that when I parked there last that Thursday to unload my car, I also got a the, parking ticket. Oh, good. good. Yeah. But I so went to the police station and I'm going to, I guess, fight that. They, I just have to write a statement asking me why I was parked there. Because yeah. I was parked there, I was unloading my car. But I figured I had a handicap sticker, so nobody's going to bother me because I was told you can park anywhere in Hampton with a handicap sticker and you don't have to pay but parking. It, but F Street does not have any parking on yeah, it. It's a higher I, fire lane. I, yeah. That's a fire lane. That's, that's, yeah. that's right. You can park any place if there's a legal parking spot. Well, I didn't know that yeah. was a, a fire thingy. <laughs> I just moved there. I found, I found out when the neighbor says, you have a ticket. I says, no, I shouldn't have a ticket. I have a handicap sticker. Yeah, well, you have a, a, a ticket because you're not supposed to park in the street. Can, Nobody can, told me that. Can I get a clarification? Sure. You said the building you're renting in, there are two apartments? No, no. He has like four, five, six in the front and like four or five up back. I don't know where they park. I have no clue where they park, but two cars parked in. There's a little driveway and two cars parked there and I asked him about it. He says, um, Debbie, he says, 
I'm not, I'm not going to throw them out of the parking spot because they've been here for years. But it, but is that is that at the property where you're renting those the, the yes. driveway? Yes. What's it, the address? Thirteen. I mean, I would I would think that. If he's renting right, the yes. place and there's a driveway there, that he should be providing a, a parking space. Not now, do we have current, any? Not under your current ordinance. Okay. Zoning doesn't doesn't require it. And what can we do about that? that change the zoning. Wrong. Cha you have to change the zoning ordinance. Oh. But there are a lot of places down the, on the leaded streets that are like that, that that have one or two spaces, but four or five units. They have to find parking in other places. That's yeah, it doesn't make any sense though, because yeah, everyone right. else that goes to the zoning board to get to have a uh, an apartment. <clears throat> I mean, 40 years ago, I had to have so many spaces yeah. for in my parking mm -hmm. lot yeah. in order to have the units that I have. You take a look at the zoning ordinances. There's, there are certain requirements there that exempt certain things. Well, we need to uh, get in touch with who. Does does this person? Lease spaces in the summertime from the town. Do we know? I don't know that. Off the top of my head, I don't know. He, we have a gotta, number of people who do. He's got to do something for parking. Yeah. So he's got to. To. Uh, well, yeah, what happens in the summertime is that most of these people. Right on, on March 16th, they pull out and park on the street and they don't move until November 15th. Not on F Street. <laughs> yeah, well, F Street's a different yeah, situation, right. But, yeah. right. uh, but most they could they could park on the next street. Right. So, who controls the zoning? The planning board. The planning board would make recommendations with regards to parking and zoning in the park and the, and the zoning ordinance. Yeah, and there are certain there are certain implications with the zoning ordinance. That certain places don't have to have parking for their commercial businesses. Oh, that's wonderful. So, well, yes. I understand about commercial business. Well, this is a commercial business. He's he's running a, a rental facility. Yeah, but there's well, no parking on his street about anyhow. For a, yeah, I understand about a store. I understand about a restaurant, but I don't. I, I have, this dumb is dumbfounding to me. I never realized that you could have an apartment building and not have to have spaces for mm -hmm. it. And I think it's something that this board should take up and do something about. Mm -hmm. But when somebody comes in for a new building. Mm -hmm. Or remodeling a building, happened. they're requested to have parking, right? Mm. Yes. Yes, I mean because yes. so. Where is in it? this case, this building is an older building. It's been there for many years, and it, it occupies almost all the land of the, the of the of the property itself. So there's only space for two or three cars to park, and of course the landlord determines who parks where. And so if it's F Street, which park are you talking about? Ashworth parking lot? Yes. How far are you from that? Not far. It's like not even a half a block. The entrance of the Ashworth parking lot is I almost would have opposite to park of the street. Yeah. Further down by the playground. I'm, I'm not really that familiar, but there's a playground and I would have to park over here. And F Street is, I'm right across the street from the casino. They said, the people said that, that the casino used to let us park there. Now they locked it. So we can't get in and park there. They used to let us park there for nothing. That's what the people said. But where are the other people parking? Did you ask them? No. They said they parked down there at the beach. Mm -hmm. No, this is something that we need to look at correcting it in the long term. Because I'm worried too what happens to me in the summer when, when all the tourists come up here every yeah. day, where am I gonna yeah. park? No, I'm concerned won't be about in the town lot, that's for sure. So Oh, okay. Can, That's going to be a problem. Can we do a waiver you. or something, a temporary waiver for her till? Well, you'd have to exempt her from the uh, the ordinances, because in the summertime you rent those spaces. I know that, but or I actually mean, you lease them. But summer isn't here yet. I mean, so to try to work out something in the meantime. Well, you'd have to change your ordinances. Well, we could. We could all. Because effective. Um, March 16th, you have the jockeying for positions, and that's when we start leasing the, actually we start leasing the, the, the lots down there from March 16th in January. It's pretty outrageous that was no, to have many, the ability. How many people lease in, the, in that lot? In the, the people lease in the winter in that lot? Uh, no. A few. Two or three. Two or three. I think we have two in there now. And it's sitting so there. If we gave her a waiver, what? 
and, and let her park her car there? What? what well, until that's we up can to do you. So well, what's, the pro what, what's, what's the problem that it's going to create? Well, it create a problem for her because under the statute, the general laws, we have to charge her as if she's paying the full rent as far as taxes are concerned on that lot. And what would that be? Do you so know? No, it's, it's assessing will have to calculate that. So we could make it, we could have a motion to allow her to do that with the understanding that she would have to cover the tax part of it. The or tax, you would have to abate it. Or would have to abate that. So. Would that be a lot of money? No. No. It, but it is money. Yes. But you, you know, if it was 50 bucks a month, is what it was before, right? In the winter? I'd have to look. I'm, yeah, not, that's I'm not going to guess. That's what they that. told that's me upstairs. Yeah, it's $50, 50 dollars a month. Yes, right. that's Right. So the tax on. on Two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's not the way the tax works. It's on the value of the land. <clears throat> you're talking. You're talking leasing real estate, mm -hmm. and that's the value of the land. So they value the parking lot, and then they divide that value into the number of parking spaces. So it may be twenty-five dollars a month, or maybe eight dollars a month. I can't tell you. Somebody has to value it and give me the figure. Somebody's going to. I say we have to do it because where is she going to? I mean, the parking van's going to be coming, and I mean, where is she going to park? She yeah. doesn't have anywhere to park. Right. That's a problem. We have to do it now, but there's you're going to have to find some other answer for in the summertime. Right. right. You'll have to That's find someplace else for the summer. Oh, Charlie. Like. Charlie, you give a free park. I try. I try and think ahead because I know once summer starts, that beach is is packed. Right, but let's you talk about right now. Let's, let's not talk you, about. Hang on a minute. Let's, let's not get talk through the winter. Let's let's uh, talk okay. about right now. All right. Uh, th there's no way we could just allow people to park in there in the winter, without leasing. If you want to change your ordinance so that we there's do no it fees. When it's snow. They do it when it snows, right? And we do it one day. And we do it in other lots in town. Yeah. Uh, uh, up, up, when there's up, high tides. Yeah. Uptown, can they park overnight uptown? Yep. No, they can't no. park overnight uptown. No. In one part of it, they can. But that's all those lots are full all, all year long. There are yeah. no spaces there. It's fair they're, they're, they're occupied all the tax. time. Right, but they're not paying. They're not paying lease on those. No. 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 You've allowed them free parking. And that's what I'm getting at. Okay. okay. Yeah. But starting starting January first, we're going to have to tax them because the law has changed. So every one of those people parking up there are going to have to be we're going to, have to issue a property tax to every one of them. Hmm. It gets to be <coughs> very interesting. Yeah, it, it does, I, and I don't know I don't know how to say this. It's life in New Hampshire. Yeah, I know, but I don't know how to say this. But there's lots of things that the state should be giving us they don't give us. So yeah. can we just turn our heads? Well, it's a, it's a double whammy because we have to, by law, tax them. You can abate it, and then the, the property taxpayers of the town pay the abatement cost. Mm. It's They've made a mess of this. Well, I guess. Can we try Charlie? Charlie's not on the agenda. That's the no, problem. he has something to put in. I mean, he, he, can't he knows it. that area. Go ahead. Go ahead, Charlie. I'll just throw out a quick one. I don't know if the only place you have these spots is in Ashworth Ave. But like I was talking earlier, if you split that lot, you could turn around and say we only have leases in this event side, and this other side we pay for time, and in the wintertime we let people park for free. So that's something you might be able to consider. Thank you. You'll have to change the ordinance to do it. Can we make a town ordinance that says that if you rent property, you have to have so many parking spots? No, yeah, that's what needs to be done. It well, I won't apply to any of the existing properties. You can't in make town. it retroactive. Yeah, yeah you can't well, make it can we make it moving forward? Yeah. Well, it may not be able to make it retroactive, but moving yeah. forward, you'd have to get it in the zoning ordinance. Yeah. Can we do something temporarily yes, so this we poor can. woman isn't yes. standing in the middle of the street? So yeah. Jim, you want to? I make a motion that we that we allow her to park in. in in the Ashworth Park space. During the winter. Second. During the winter months. During the winter months. Until March Until 15th. March 15th. March 15th. And then we will have to address, we'll have to address something different then. So I have to come back upstairs to make an appointment to come back down here, or will you notify me by mail? Mm -hmm. March, March 15th, you'd have to start paying the full. 
Well, we'll have right. to handle it before March yeah. 15th. Well, and you're you're going to have to handle it before March before March 15th. You're going to have to handle your right. parking situation. And well, that's why I asked you, and you said, well, let's worry about winter first. Well, at, I'm trying to give you, we're, we're all trying to give you a relief right now so you right. won't be stuck yeah. with so no place to park. So you can find another answer, because this is a, many people that live in Hampton have these same issues. That's why it's pretty hard to deal but with. But there's a lot of single homes, too, right along. You might find somebody that um, w is willing to let you park on their property. Yeah, yeah, that's what somebody anywhere. that's close, but yeah. I think it's like a, a these are things that you have to do. Out. You know, that's uh, I've had to do it for years. I own a business, and uh, I have to uh, find either people. T Luckily, sometimes I find someone that doesn't charge me, um, but other times I do. Okay. Or you can do what everyone else does, which I think is wrong too. Find a place to park your car and just leave it there and don't go anywhere all winter, summer. Oh, good heavens. So, <laughs> we have a, that's yes. going to be a hard no. thing to do. Well, you'll be driving around looking for another spot. I know. Yeah. Wait, wait. And, it's tough. And, that's, and, that, and I don't God. think that would be fair for people that I know. I'm not making light of your situation. No, I Trust understand me. that. Sir. But that's why it's pretty hard to do anything because there's many other people who have these same issues. Yeah. I, would, I, I find it hard to believe that your property owner does not lease spaces from the town. If he has, if he has rentals, he may, he, may, he may already do that. Okay. And so he just chose not to do it well, during the winter time. he should have told you that. Yeah. And he should have told you that before he rented that to you. Because that he didn't, was, uh, yeah, I guess he wasn't but thinking and I for, wasn't for now, I thought I could park there, that's why. So if he, if he, uh, if he does lease them, then, then that's the way to go. And I, I would think that he would should do that. Now, what uh, about the casino right across the street from you? That's, that's a private lot. That's private? That's a private lot. Okay. And so we have no control over what a private lot does for them. But we have a motion and a second to allow her to park yep. in the Ashworth lot until March 15th. Free of charge. Free of charge. Yes. Do me a favor, though, make sure you have, leave your hang tag there. So they know the, the police know that that is. So. Oh yeah, I always keep it on my windshield. Yep. Don't do it while you're driving, but. You oh, should. I keep it on the driving too. I'm not you, supposed you to. You shouldn't. That that actually blocks your vision. Oh, it does. So yeah, oh, you okay. could get stopped for that. You could get oh, stopped. I haven't gotten stopped yet. Thank <laughs> God. I just don't want you to get stopped. But anymore. that actually is. You're not supposed to have anything hanging in front of. You're not supposed to have I, anything. I I thought but. that was supposed to stay there, and that's where I put it, and I left it there. No, you know, because you could get, you could get, if, if you got in an accident, that could, they could say that was because of the part of the problem, yeah. because you had to block vision. She so takes you, it literally. Yes, yeah, yeah. so you don't want to leave it there unless you're parked. But in the meantime, in the meantime, she can, may not be the only person in this pickle. Then Is they'll have to come in. Can we? Well, I was we going to say, can we do anything? I ain't saying a word. They should come in. They should, Everybody I think they has should to come learn in. on their own like Absolutely. I did. I, and I totally agree with you. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right. And can I just say something? Yes. You, it's your responsibility when you rent someplace to make sure they have parking. I mean, we're doing this for you, but you really have to pay attention when you're renting a place and talk to them and say, where am I going to put my car? Because we can't have people coming in individually saying, uh, you've got to provide parking for me when the place doesn't. Right. But not see, everybody has a head full of all these little Well, that, that's, niceties. but still. You can call me okay. I, when you have a question and tell your landlord to call us and come in. Oh, you want me to tell him to call you? You can tell him that we're asking to have him come in. So we Are we? we? We're not Are asking him. We? We, did, we didn't make that request. I thought you said ask him to come in. No, I didn't ever said that. No, if anyone had if an anybody issue. anybody has an issue, oh. they need to come up Like I stairs. said, it's not up to me to tell them what to do or how to. I had to figure this part out on myself because I said, there has to be somebody to help me. And actually, it was a police officer at the station when I got the ticket for parking on my street, moving my stuff out, suggested I come to the okay. town. And that's good. And you have the, did you already get the parking ticket? Yeah, I already filled out the papers explaining that I just moved from from um, Royal Crest to a 13F. Okay. And I was moving my stuff, but I was trying to unpack at the same time <laughs> and leaving the car on the road not realizing. Cause yeah. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, that's understandable. It's a tough street. And I've been yeah. looking for like since uh, January an apartment, a place I can stay year round instead of paying winter mm -hmm. rental and then I have to move again. 
I've like moved like three or four times. I stayed in the shelter and everything, and it's just very hard for me. Yep. And, and when it, I found this place. And that, that's why we're trying to help you out. Yeah, and I actually, and, oh, and I And then we, uh, we, as we get, you know, you get closer to the march, just, you know, be in contact with your landlord. Mm -hmm. See if he does that. If he already does that, then that might be a situation where you're already going to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Yes, And okay. if he's not, tell him that, you know, we suggested he should have. Parking for Parking everybody. for. His tenants. His tenants. Exactly. I, that's what I would have thought too. Well, he said sense. to well, me that to everybody was that. parking yeah, in um, the the parking lot, the the, the, the concert, the, the the casino parking lot right there. And then all of a sudden, two days two days later, they put up a, that that arm thing well, see, and they he, tied a, a, see, a he, chain around it. He's relying on other people to to do that, and that's you can't do that. Yeah. So. Yeah, he don't live there. That's why. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope that helps you out. It does. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. So I can start parking there tonight? Oh, I'll, I'll wait till tomorrow. It's on the street right now. Okay. Up at the beach. All right. Yeah, wait till yeah, tomorrow. You're safe till the 15th. Yeah. yeah. And then you're safe yeah. till March 15th. Right. Okay. Just pay attention to tides. Yeah. To because the tides. when tides are in excess of 10.1 feet, that parking lot can flood. Oh. Didn't know that either. Yep. So, and, and we can't do anything about that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just stay put and don't drive. We'll ask Mother Nature about <laughs> We're captain. Huh? All right. So thank you very much. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're going to notify the police or somebody. Well, we'll, we'll so parking right. enforcement, yes. Who, Fred, who else can um, do a zoning ordinance besides? This is ridiculous. A zoning can be petitioned. My suggestion is you sit down no. with the planner all set. and try mm -hmm. to address the issue. Um, yeah. to somehow come down with some some meaningful item that will help correct the problem. Well, why don't we get the planner to come in yeah. and be here on the agenda? Yes. I was yeah. going to bring Give him a time. couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. You give him a couple of weeks. Yeah. His dad just passed yeah. away. so And get him so. here on the agenda, and yeah. will this be one of our long-term uh, goals or goals. projects yep. to do something right. yeah. about? Okay. At Excellent. least for something that's coming new, if we can't do anything about the past. And I'll mention it to the planning board on Wednesday night, because we have a meeting Wednesday. Town manager's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, federal and state elections are tomorrow. <coughs> Polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Winnicott High School. Please vote. We need the votes. Work has commenced on the replacement of the gravity sewer at the wastewater sewer plant to the cell tower site of the Masonic Lodge and Tide Mill Road. This is the gravity portion of the sewer. Yep. Please expect traffic uh, slowdowns and detours at the transfer station. The transfer station will be closed. It was closed today. It will be closed tomorrow mm -hmm. uh, for that reason. And on Tide Mill Road, please drive carefully and watch for workmen in the roadways. We are actually going down the roadway uh, on Tide Mill yep. to put that gravity sewer yep. in down to the manhole that's in front of the driveway to the cell tower. So that's going to take some time, and the reason the transfer station is closed today and tomorrow <coughs> is we have to go across this transfer station a lot. Mm -hmm. So it would not allow traffic to go in and circulate through that area. Uh, please make appropriate arrangements for parking vehicles off the roadways from 1 a.m. to 7 a.m. starting November 15th through March 15th. No parking in any roadway within Hampton will be permitted between those dates and, on, and those times. Overnight parking uh, on town parking lots is permitted during snow emergencies, but at no other time except for those who have paid for winter parking permits and leases. Please see the finance department if you have a need for a winter parking permit lease. Parking on Ashworth and Island Path parking lots during flood tides in excess of 10 feet is permitted with the appropriate parking permit. Please see the selectman's office for those permits. The board is invited um, to have a tour of the new school facilities on Saturday, November 10th, 9 a.m. to noon. <clears throat> the town clerk's office is closed tomorrow so they can all be at the election. Oh, good. Hopefully that works out fine for everybody. Um, We're going to ask the Channel 22 people to come in in a minute so that they can sit and talk to the board about uh, what's going to happen with display of uh, ballots and, and uh, removal of uh, slides and so forth on the website. That's something the board has to make a decision on. Transfer station's closed. 
Recreation Department is looking for people who want to tra travel to Ireland. November 6th to 13th, 2019, or if you'd like to go to Tuscany, April 23rd to May 1, 2020. Please call the Recreation Department for information on those two tours. Uh, we'll probably talk about that again, but those are available and they would like to see people come in. The leaf pickup is currently underway. We realize that oak trees fall later. Mine falls in the spring, so I don't have to worry about yeah. picking those leaves up till the yeah. snow's gone. But uh, if you do have a situation of where you have a lot of oak leaves, if you can't take them to the transfer station, call Public Works and they will eventually come and pick them up. That's important to note. And that should be it, Mr. Chairman. I think that's... Any questions for the... All of it. Is, is oh. the Chairman... Oh, hold on. Oh. Excuse me. Uh, I, I don't want to miss this because this is important. This coming Wednesday from 6 to 5 to 6.30 p.m. at the Beach and Seashell, the, the Hampton Beach State Park will hold a, yeah. uh, a okay. meeting on, on the park and its facilities and what's going to happen for the winter and the spring. What day was that? That's going to be this Wednesday, uh, November 7th, from 5 to 6.30 in the yeah. evening. Down at the seashell. Okay. At the seashell. And this Wednesday evening, isn't there also the Rockingham Plan Commission, the legislative uh, that is correct. invite over yep. at Liberty Lane? Yes. Okay. Yep. All at one so, night. <laughs> you get a number of different projects going on at the same time. Yeah, yeah. okay. I, what, Mayor, is Mayor the Lewis. chairman going to be tapped as a, a guide for those tours? Which ones? <laughs> oh, you just mentioned Ireland and oh. whatever there. Well, I, I suppose we could ask him if he'd like to go. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to send me that bit. <laughs> yeah, I knew there was a catch. <laughs> I have questions uh. for the manager. Um, see can we can we place um, notice on channel 22 the you you've done a great job putting the notices on the town website but not everybody has a computer um, on channel 22 can we put messages like uh, you know that the transfer station is closed on uh, November 15th through, uh, no, whatever date it is, um, to tell the public that the transfer station is closed because of the construction. I don't know if that might help, but I'd, I'd, I'd like to see a little, some kind of message up if, on that. If, if you would like to start making messages for it, we have a very limited staff there. Oh, yeah. Somebody has to do it, and we've run out of somebody's in that in That, that, that is, in fact, the problem. So... Uh, yeah. I know we're doing the best we can at putting stuff on our website, Yeah. but I, I'm looking for that guy named somebody, and <laughs> hopefully we can get him to do that. And uh, so we're still out there looking for volunteers for the yeah. uh, Channel 22, so if anybody would like to volunteer yeah. or anybody would like, like to do the, the little part of the part-time thing, yeah. uh, the Channel 22 is looking for new blood. And so, and until we do that, we, they, we're strapped them the best we can okay. to do what they're doing. That's good. Now I have a few for the manager. Okay. Um, on the lease of the Packers for the par Department of Public Works to be delivered at the end of December this year, I have a question. Uh, Christy was kind enough to give us our completed pages of the requested budget that the selectmen have now approved. But in looking at that, we have the 124,000. Now I assume, Fred, that that is showing in the 2019 budget request because the delivery is supposed to be at the end of December, right? December 31st or whatever. Right. So the intent would be that the payment would be made out of the 2019 budget. Right? Unless you're going to stand there with a the check when they pull in with the truck. Actually, we're going to stand there with a check when they pull in with the truck because it's a 2018 appropriation. And you also, it's a, it's a five-year lease, so you also have to have it in the appropriation for 2019. Okay, but my problem is, <coughs> what, if, what if we have a default budget? It's contractual. It's not a problem because that money's already, the contract's already been appropriated. It's, a, it's, 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 it's part of the default. It's part of the default budget already. Because it's an existing contract for multiple years. 
It's part of the default budget. Okay, because of Article 13, that's what yes. you're saying? Yes, yes. Yep. It's so a five-year lease purchase. There's, so. no, there's no timing in here, though. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a five-year lease purchase agreement for two Mack cab over trash trucks, et cetera, in the amount of 620000 and to raise appropriate and appropriate the sum of 124000 to fund said lease purchase agreement in year one? So year one is going to be... This year, this is when this article passed. 2018, right? So, what do we do next year? It's already in the budget for next year, and it's yeah. it's it's a mandatory appropriation because of this. It's, it's defaulted because of because of that that article. So we nobody can touch it. Oh sure, right the now. town can vote not to do it. No, we can return the vehicles and have no trash trucks. No, 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 no. But I'm saying, <laughs> if we we have this locked in now, and and the town because of the vote on Article 13. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's a defaulted amount. So if the town were to go to a default budget because that's a contract, the mm -hmm. town would still be required to pay the hundred twenty-four thousand dollars. Okay, and it would not invalidate the rest of the contract. No, it would not. Okay. So now, in light of that. Um, do we have these are going to be new vehicles for the Department of Public Works are they going to need to put any accessories any extras on these trucks like the lifting mechanism in the back to dump the carts and all that stuff is there going to be an additional expenditure there these, are they going to come full they come complete. There's no rear loader on this because there is no rear loading device. Okay. So they're, they're, they're lift devices as we have now on the existing trucks. They have a lift device on each side. Okay. So there's nothing extra we have to do to these vehicles. They're going to be just, road ready? Just maintenance and drive them. Okay. And under the lease, we provide the maintenance? We do. The lessee does not? That's correct. Okay. All right. I appreciate that because I was kind of concerned um, glass bottles and are we going to get an asset management report I thought we were supposed to have one of those every year asset management report it's part of the uh, I believe it's part of the uh, report that goes to the auditors okay that's part of your audit okay so that and that gentleman was here uh, tonight excellent Okay, and yeah, one more, and I did mention to you about the, the hydrants. Okay, I appreciate that, thank you. Okay, Regina. Yeah. I'm good for questions of the town manager. Jim? Good. Rick? Thank you. All hey. right. Thank you all. Next we have old business. We have an amendment to chapter 628, hawkers, peddlers, and inner vendors mobile food service <laughs> vendors updated. Mr. Town Manager. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you had asked us to, uh, we had presented this a couple of meetings ago, and uh, you, the board had suggested that we make certain changes or propose certain changes to it for your examination and thought process. We have done that uh, through staff and uh, have presented to you what we think is what you wanted um, for your review. If it's not, please, t please tell us yeah. and we'll do further revisions. But Anybody have any questions? No, I thought it worked out fine. I didn't have a problem. I'm yeah. fine with it. Jim? I'm uh, fine. Rick, nothing? No. So I need a motion to accept the changes. I'll make that motion. I'll second. In, in Chapter 628, 628. Yes. the Harkers Pedals and yeah. Inner mm -hmm. Vendors. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. I have one more thing under old business. Okay. Um, we need to set aside time, please, to review the vehicles for police, fire, and public works, especially public works. When we get those new leased MAC trucks, are we going to be ready to retire some of our existing vehicles? Wasn't that part of the Warren article, Fred? What? The, the lift devices that we have now are going. Going on those, so the other yeah. trucks will be gone. 
Yes. So. Well, the other trucks will be going, and besides, we should be doing a thorough review every year of the town-owned vehicles because if some of them are coming, I want to see if the public works director has some of the vehicles that he wants to see uh, traded in, removed, sold for scrap, whatever. Well, I, I think what you see is, uh, and we saw it in the budget, that there were no new vehicles in the in the in the his budget. That's not what so, I'm worrying about. I'm worrying about old vehicles. I'm worried about him doing here. his job. Yes, I but I would that. like to hear from the public I think, works director. I right. think he has done his job, and I think if he has a, a problem with vehicles, he will come do that with us. I'm so. not talking about a problem with vehicles. I'm talking about keeping old junk vehicles, like that old freight liner that was bought in 2002, and, that they still and use. sat on the edge of the marsh and rotted. And that they still use. I think he was going to bring up the discussion of the inventory when he came with the warrant articles because I think I he might have right, a warrant he, article correct. that is. He has a warrant article for new correct. And I, he did say that he would address the inventory. I'm pretty well, sure that's so what he, he I would like him talks, too when that's he comes fine. in. No. Please so don't let him do it. That's right. That's, a, that's his job. He will yeah. bring it. Okay, that's good. Any other old business? No, oh, I do have something. Oh, I'm sorry. I oh, just, <laughs> like, forgot about myself. All but right. is Brian here to speak to us? Do you want to let him New go business. first? New business. New oh, business. Okay, all right. All right, so old business. I just want to update on some things I got going on with water right now. Good. So I originally thought that we were going to have our final commission meeting today. But that they did have a meeting today, but no decisions were made, luckily, because not very many of us were there. So that's going to be put off until after the holiday Thanksgiving. But... I have been working closely with Representative Mesmer, who I want to outline again is the leader yeah. in all of this yeah. for the entire state of New Hampshire. Yeah. And I would like to work with her to make sure that certain recommendations be included in the report that we're going to be finalizing, hopefully by the end of the month. And I will support her 100%, and I want the board to know that, because she is the expert and she is the one that is out there for the constituents of New Hampshire. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. I have been on the phone all day and back and forth, uh, as Representative Bean says, the dog and pony show. I've been in one all day, okay? I, the only reason I got DES to even contact me is because I sent an email out to three of Governor Sununu's advisors, and they contacted DES. There's one thing that I have a real problem with right now. It's a statement that is on the Aquarian website. Now, Aquarian tells me that DES are the experts, and so I talked to DES today, and they want to go on, da 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 it's Aquarian's website, they can put up whatever they want. Well, this is what the website says. Is Coakley Landfill the source of PFAS in Aquarian wells? Answer, no. DES has stated definitely that Coakley Landfill is not a source of PFAS in Aquarian wells. Aquarian's wells closest to Coakley actually have the lowest levels of PFAS. DES investigations suggest that there are PFAS sources in the area. Directly above that question, they state, on their website, currently the exact sources of PFAS found in Aquarian wells are uncertain due to their presence in so many products used in society which is exactly what the information that I had experts all over New England say when I went to a conference in Stowe. Mm -hmm. We don't know. DES can claim that they don't know anything to come to an occlusion, but yet they can come to an conclusion like that and put it on their website. So I just wanted to say that it's unsubstantiated conclusion and it's misleading to the public. It should be removed immediately in my view. One of the recommendations of our existing commission draft report is to ensure that proper, correct, and factual information is made available to the public, consistent at what I heard at the conference I attended in Vermont. Factual and explicit information, factual to the public. I would argue that this statement does not hold true to those requirements. Tonight, I would like to ask the Board of Selectmen if they could support, in the form of a motion, the following recommendation for me as the Town of Hampton representative to make at our November 28th final meeting. That the Town of Hampton supports the recommendation that the Seacoast Drinking Water Commission include within its report the establishment of a regional drinking water commission to include at least one representative from each participating municipality. I would include 
Hampton motion to be an involved municipality going forward. Commission would also include at least one representative from De Department of Environmental Services, the Rockingham and Stratford Planning Commissions in both municipal and private water utility companies. This issue will be ongoing for the foreseeable future. Implementation of this state and municipal form commission will allow for recommendations to be communicated to our state legislator by all involved in the appointed commissions in the appointed commission. Details and duties must be adequately outlined. I would also like stated within the motion that Hampton recommends both Regina Barnes and Mindy Mesmer to stay involved in this process and in the establishment of the commission going forward. Without these municipal appointed individuals and those who represent the constituents and nothing else, nothing will ever get accomplished. Mindy Mesmer is crucial as a resource to the public. And I have attached the uh, RSA that implemented the Hampton Beach Area Commission as something that I hope we can use as a guide to establish this. So I'll be happy to so move that we go ahead with that, um, with that motion and I hope we get a second and support um, what Regina is doing by way of safe and clean water. Any other questions of the board? You have a second? second. I'm, I'm I'll, I'll, I'll second my I'll motion. second it. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm asking them, I don't want to also see if anybody else from the board wants to make any comments. Hmm. Yeah, I support a regional water commission strongly. I don't know if I, if I support adding specific names to it because the commission, I don't know if that should be the commission's you know whatever the commission comes up i mean not that that's my only concern mm -hmm. and i'm it's not that i'm against anybody or anything else i'm just yeah when usually when you have a commission the commission's appointed or elected and there's not specific names but you could you could we could nominate with somebody from here to go to it yeah right. that each town should at least yeah. have but i don't know if we one. should have the yeah. aspect of you know, so I can go with the regional commission. Absolutely, it's a good idea. But. Well, that's fine. If you want me to take that out of the motion, I'm willing to yeah. do that. But I just want this board to know that when I'm there recommending, I am going to be recommending that both Mindy Mesmer and I mm -hmm. stay involved. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. And that's I think fine. we already had a motion last week to right. have and, and, and Regina. I just want to make sure that a person that doesn't live in Hampton can be put on by well, this Hampton would, to, to this do would that. be an area wide, wouldn't it? Well, they do have on some commissions, they do have a member at large. So yeah. you should uh, figure out how this commission. Maybe have Mesmer to be a member at large. Right, yeah. right. But That's you have to figure out how this, uh, we can this commission is yeah. uh, chartered and how it's going to, what auspices is it going to work under and then that that group should have a member at large and she would be a perfect member well i'm hoping large. it would work similarly to the way each back it's ongoing yeah, that's a state commission. well this would be this too. would be a state commission too yeah, well, that's what i want to do so that it's it. ongoing and we don't got to keep doing this every okay year. so we have a, a motion and a second with the fact that we're not going to put names in it right. but understanding that's what you want so mm -hmm. all those in favor unanimous thank you good good deal Alrighty, now any other thing under old business? Because the legislature uh, do we has need, to do that. Mm -hmm. Do we yeah. need under old business to set up our schedule for tomorrow? Or is yes, that sir, you do. Oh, can we do that under old business? Wait, yep. Can I clarify something for Rick? But the report that we're going to be recommending on our commission, we want to recommend that the legislature do this. So that's yeah. what we're trying to. Yeah. I want well, the board to agree to it so when I talk right. about it in a couple weeks, you already know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have elections tomorrow. Yes. I can uh, be there from 7 to 11. That's perfect. I can get there uh, at 11. I can be there from 4 to 8. Rick, 4 to 8. To 11 to? To whenever. Um, I want to stay there. 8? Yeah, sure. I'll, to I'll take a break when someone else is there. You, Mary Louise? Um, I'm trying to figure out where we're fitting in here. You fit um, in wherever you want. Well, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, Regina's I don't wanna, saying she's doing 11 to 8, so you can go in and give her a break in. at some oh, time. Yeah, whenever you want to come in, then I'll so, take off when you're there. Oh, okay. Then I'll try like 2 to 5 or something like right. that. Okay. And I will 
I will be there on and off all day long. And, and, we, and, and we, we need three we at need least. Three at night, at, after 8 o'clock. Right. When they're tallying. I'll, right, I'll yeah, be there. I'll be there. I'll so be there's three, okay. at least three okay. of us. Okay, I'd rather not good. be there. Okay, okay so, let's so at least three of us is Jim, there's Regina, yeah. and myself. Excellent. We'll be there to sign. Super. Okay, you just, if I'm not there, call me, and I'll come. <laughs> I mean, I should be there, but I forgot once. Just <laughs> once. <laughs> it's, things happen. Things happen. I'll call your wife. <laughs> okay. She'll remind you. That's good. And oh, I, you still have bills, I think, they have to sign. Yeah, right there. Oh. Right. And bills, I still have one quick one under old old business. Okay. Um, and talking about water, Aquarian has notified us that they're going to start servicing the hydrants. This <laughs> is November, and I have asked Fred for the information on, it. Uh, on the uh, for official um, what? Uh, official their maintenance policy maintenance policy for doing hydrants so I'm going to send a, an email to uh, Aquarian uh, suggesting that they see to it that they are servicing our hydrants in proper weather the I'm sure they're not going to do it if it's in inclement weather. Uh, I wouldn't so, be sure well, of that. Well, that's that that's a private business, and that's what they they have to yes, do. Yes, but we're paying. They've told for those that's private. right, and they've told us when it's going to be done, and that's what we're going to have to well. assure that it get it gets done. How are you, sir? Good. <laughs> You're the man of the hour. I guess you're here to talk about, talk about election postings. Postings and a policy we'll policy. put together. Yep. Uh, for So what we're going to do, what we were thinking, I had some thoughts with Christy and, and uh, myself, and uh, we'll try to put up the, uh, the results the next day, of course, as soon as possible, but before noon. Uh, and then they would run uninterrupted for 24 hours so like noon Wednesday to noon Thursday unless there's a emergency snow mm -hmm. alert something like that that That's we have good. to interrupt or a live meeting uh, and after that uh, we, we were thinking um, on the bulletin board it would run for well two days to a week I mean that's kind of I don't know your thoughts on that but I, I think two days on the bulletin board is, mm -hmm. is plenty after that, everybody should know yeah. who won and, and, and such. So that's kind of the policy we have right now. Well, that's you know, that's a suggestion we're, we're putting out right Paul now. Paul or Dylan usually put it up? They do, yeah. They've got a, they're being trained on it. Well, we're trying to train them on it. Uh, uh, Nick's helping out. Nick okay. Pulley is helping out. But it will out. be done by noontime. Yeah, we're going to try to shoot for noontime. Everything will be up there. Because okay. each slide has to be made individual. and uh, it, it, but. Uh, they've been working real hard to get caught up on that. This but do you have it up a, a, a little bit uh, the evening of the election? We, we will do our best, but uh, I mean, there's nobody. I yeah. mean, yeah, we don't I get understand. the results until late, late. And yeah. honestly, I can't do it yet, okay, because I've never trained on it. Uh, and the only one that really could is either the guys, uh, either the IT guys, and I don't know how well they can do it, or Nick Pullian, but he's at the college, so he does a lot of work from, yeah. from college, so yeah. he's been a great asset. So, but what, what you're saying is it will be up by noon time? By noon, the at the, we, yeah, that's going to be our, our goal, long before long. noon, we, the, the yeah. early as, as possible, you know, right. maybe that morning, you know, we'll do the best we can to get that's it up. Good. Better to be accurate. Yep. And have oh, yeah. that little yeah. delay. And this is for yeah. the channel 22, right? This the is TV. For channel 22. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like okay. I said, it'll run nonstop for 24 hours. Okay. Day. And uh, yeah. well, I, I figured noon till. I mean, noon is a good time. Noon it to noon Thursday, to if not before. Yeah. All right. So, do so. We, what do we need from this? Just, just, just as long as you approve what they're doing, then and right. that everybody needs to be on the same page, basically. Yep, that's yeah. fine. Right. Right. I'll write it up. And Consensus uh, of the board is you. Uh, absolutely. I'm, okay. Thank you. Sounds right. good. Whatever yeah. Brian recommends, <laughs> we <happens>. do. <laughs> uh, and and I just want to clarify that if anybody wants to join our, I mentioned that a little while ago. You did, but yeah. you said volunteers, and these people you'll be paid. Right. Okay? And so, I was trying to get that in too. But yeah, you'll be paid. I want to make sure I clarified what. So I figured when you came out. That you are looking for both paid and volunteer positions, right? Right. To to Anybody work to at help. Channel Twenty Two because you guys are stretched paper thin right yeah, now. Yeah, we are. We are. And uh, 
we've had some guys on the on the board for or doing this for a long time, and we could use some, you know, young and new, whatever, young, old, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We'll take whatever we can get, and you know, as long as they breathe. Huh? As long as they breathe. As long as they can breathe. <laughs> yeah. and they're out of diapers, so either way. So. Well, we're sometimes there. that. Yeah, I know. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very good. Thank Thanks. you. Excellent. So we. Uh, any other new business? Anything, uh, closing comments? Make a motion to adjourn at 2016. Motion to 2016. All, all second. Right. See you at all the polls. All in favor? See you at the polls. Thank you very much.